figure out how to, how to do this all myself. <laughs> Yeah, I was awesome having somebody that could click all the buttons and, you know, make sure everything was live and all that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Need to get a, uh, get a system again. About a minute or so left here. You got a good smile, dude. Thank you. I appreciate it. You do too, man. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna rock the world with our smiles cause. I always gotta work at it I'm uh I'm trying to you know I'm always trying to be real serious and focused yeah yeah these are not the uh, not the most relatable things <laughs> okay cool let's see our countdown <clears throat> just the top Hey, Fernando, hey, it's good to see you here today. I'm glad we got on together, and thanks for connecting with me. Definitely, Curtis. It's good to connect with you uh, today as well. So anybody that doesn't know Fernando yet is Fernando Flores. He's a certified uh, health, health and performance coach, attorney, author, lecturer, podcaster, influencer, speaker, and also the founder of the Health and, Wealth, health and Wellness University. So you've done some pretty pretty crazy stuff, and I'm excited to have you on the show. <laughs> Definitely, Curtis. Uh, I appreciate you just uh, giving me the space to share a little bit more about my journey and what I'm working on right now and what I have coming up next. Sounds good. Hey, and uh, so we've got a list of questions I'd like to ask you, but I'd like mm-hmm. to uh, just kind of just kind of roll with the punches here, freelance a little bit, and just ask sure. you some regular stuff about. Like, first off, how did you get into health and fitness? You're already an attorney and got some other other things going on. What made you? become interested in the health and fitness nation? Well, yeah, I mean, um, that's, that's a great initial question. You know, I had worked under very fast paced, high stress, uh, really intense work environments where there's a lot of demands, pressures, expectations. And for many years, Curtis, I did it in a way that I, I, I just didn't take care of my health and wellness. I didn't take care of uh, my ability to manage stress. I didn't eat well. I didn't sleep well. I didn't eat as healthy as possible. Work came first, right? That professional identity that I built for myself as an attorney, that came first, day in and day out, day in and day out. And as a result, a lot of the components of my well being stayed very far behind, Curtis, because I disregarded them basically. Yeah. And so it became important for me to really uh, learn how to lead with my health and wellness, how to lead. And then everything else, uh, you know, followed every other component of my life, whether it was on a professional or personal was really something that um, ended up, uh, I ended up thriving in as well. And so that's, that's kind of the background of the, the broad background of why I got into health and wellness. That's awesome. A lot of times we're, uh, we're on completely opposite end of the spectrum there. I started out, you know, in the fitness industry. I was, uh, mm-hmm. you know, bodybuilding and personal training, and I was ranked in the number as the number three personal trainer in the nation, or number four personal trainer in the nation for one of the major, uh, major national franchises. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, I had a four hundred and fifty five pound bench, and you know, all all I wow. looked for was yeah. was bodybuilding, weightlifting, and and uh, we actually had a a supplement manufacturer. I mean, a supplement distribution company, mm-hmm. and we were supplying a lot of the major retail chains and ended up launching a uh, cosmetic medical laser franchise and also had a company manufacturing injectable research pharmaceutical peptides. So, mm. I, so I went from the opposite end where I, I was extremely good shape and, you know, had a, uh, did some photo shoots with, you know, all, all ripped and shaved <laughs> and tan and all that to now I'm, uh, 
I got I got focused way too much on business and you know mm-hmm. launched a telecommunications company after the brain c- cancer, and uh, ended up to where I I completely forgot about health and fitness and got you know got overweight and out of shape. Yeah, and then just finally uh, a couple of years ago got back into realizing that hey, when I'm working out and exercising and doing the right stuff, the business everything else improves. Your whole life improves when you're healthy and and in shape. So you're. Yeah. Uh, you're ahead of me on that. I figured out, <laughs> hey, I was making money and forgot about the, uh, forgot about keeping healthy and staying alive. So, yeah, you know, I think a lot of us do. You know, and it, it's uh, stress is something that connects us all. You know, I've been able to talk about it. Uh, I've gone to India to talk about stress management. I've gone to to Mexico. Yeah. I actually recently just got invited to join the Global Workplace Wellness Conference. That's going to focus on. You know, how can we manage stress and avoid occupational burnout? Because those are my areas of expertise. I became really passionate about the problem that I was experiencing of, you know, occupational burnout, not getting there. And then one of the key solutions, which was emotional intelligence. Okay. Right. And so uh, it, it, it just became the two areas, you know, kind of like the yin and yang that I decided to really just go all in on. And so that's that. those are my areas of expertise, understanding what occupational burnout is, and then understanding what uh, emotional intelligence, how it could be used to help us manage it. Man, that's great. This is the perfect audience for you to be, for, you to be, for us to be sharing this in. You've had a, uh, w- with you understanding that, a lot of our, you know, we have 650,000 plus followers in the group between mm-hmm. the group and the social channels but mm-hmm. the majority of our folks are entrepreneurs or either successful business owners or they're looking to get into becoming an entrepreneur and, and uh yeah. maybe putting that putting the health on the back on the back burner so i i think this is a great connection for people to be able to see and share so first off your you've got the uh let me look at here i had it pulled up on my screen you've got your health and fitness course coming or your uh online the conference, conference mm-hmm. coming up here in a couple of days the uh, health and wellness university online conference and that is august 8th right yeah yeah we're, we're about a, a week out so i'm really excited about it and just to give you a general sense you know we have speakers that are going to talk about everything from using meditation throughout the day morning middle of the day and then afternoon to not just break up your 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 day into more manageable chunks. A lot of the things that people, you know, when you think high performance, you think I just have to work for a lot of hours. But in reality, it's being uh, able to understand when you need a break and then having the compassion, right? And ability, the emotional management to actually take that break yeah. so that you can come back to your work after the break in a more empowered way. And so, uh, we're going to have someone that, you know, Roxy Rebus is just an excellent um, uh, yoga fitness instructor that's going to take us through very awesome meditations throughout the day so that we can then implement them in our lives, you know, and I know that we are all busy. So they're like, you know, quick uh, meditations that really have a powerful impact that relate to energy, that relate to, to boosting our energy, and then also breaking away from the work. Because sometimes we will just work, work, work without there really being a break between, you know, work and play. Yeah. And so I think that's really important. You know, we're going to have a speaker. So we're going to talk about uh, uh, Lila Volkas is a nutrition consultant. And she's going to talk about how can we boost our brain with food, right? How can we really uh, thrive in doing our work and pursuing our passion? in fulfilling our mission and making the impact and having the influence that we want to have by eating foods that really nourish our brain. Uh, and then, you know, the theme this conference really is, is focused on, you know, workplace wellness, but uh, it, it applies just as equally to the entrepreneur who is a solopreneur working from. Okay. We might've lost your, uh, you just paused there, my lost your internet. Hey, you still there? Let me see here, see if I can see what's going on. I'm home. Oh man, can hey, we lost Curtis? Yeah, we lost a about thirty seconds of your uh it's not like the internet blanked out on you. 
So you're telling um, me about? I think we're back on though, right? Yeah, we're back on again now. Hey, and a uh, quick quick Excellent. thing to mention too, as we we kind of uh, we'll just use that as an intermission with that blank spot there. But anybody that's watching this sure. right now, if if you guys have questions or you know questions or comments for Fernando, be sure to you can get on the on the chat here. If you comment down below this video, just in that chat, it'll actually we can show that up on the live screen on the live stream. Uh, it doesn't look like anybody's trying. Anybody has uh, commented yet, but that is ready to go. If you if you guys want to throw something out there for him, you know, a question or a mm -hmm. whatever. So, okay, tell me again. We we lost part of that with your with the internet connection there. Yeah, and, and so what I was saying is just you know the theme is really applicable to uh, either who has a job and they're working and they're trying to foster greater levels of uh, wellness, you know, optimal levels of health and well being. Uh, or an entrepreneur, you know, a solo entrepreneur who is really uh, trying to move their business and mission forward. Okay. Um, and we're going to have uh, just speakers focusing on also emotional health, um, uh, neuroscience as a way of managing stress, and really talking about pain-free fitness as well. Uh, we have we have a trainer and. Uh, manual therapist and business owner who's going to come talk to us about the the pillars of a pain-free body which awesome. you know we yeah no it's going to be really great and um and also just other themes like how being your most authentic self can really be something that helps you as you engage in your work that's it's going to be a lot of fun a lot of great speakers cool that's awesome and what what time is that if you just say your pacific standard time yourself right yeah, Pacific Standard Time. We're going to start the the. Uh, we're going to open up virtually at eight thirty a.m. But uh, you know the speakers are going to start at nine. So, and we go till about three p.m. So okay, and uh, yeah. drop your website link real quick or wherever they'd sign up if, they, if somebody's wanting to join in your conference. Yeah, or definitely. just tell me what your what your link is. Yeah, uh, folks can visit healthandwellness.university. Okay. And the, if you go to the events, uh, section there, you'll be able to just go directly to the event, right? But I'll give you the event right, right here too. So that you can share that. Let me drop that link here. Health and wellness dot university. Dot university. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, hey, that's a good looking site. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I like that. Okay, one sec. I'm uh, I'm gonna drop that in our in the live show notes here in the chat mm -hmm. section. So, so their little computer's taking a minute to load. <laughs> I had all my notes pulled up and. No problem. Okay, so you've got, you'll have the, uh, here, here's the first one, Health and Wellness University. And then there was, I send you the second one in the chat that's just the direct, if, if people just want to go straight to the Eventbrite one, that's the second one. Okay. Sounds good. I'll, and we can add that um, after the, after the chat here. Sure. I can drop that in your show notes, but it's just so can people can see the actual link. Excellent. You can't click Excellent. on the link in the in the video, but I'm going to bring those over there. Like I said, if you guys want to comment anything below your live, your comments can show up live in the video stream. Kind of a neat, neat little feature. But okay, so you've got the you've got multiple different speakers, uh, and then how long is this? How long is your conference going to last for? Do you have a do you have a set structure? For yeah, sure? yeah. Once people uh, register and signed up. Uh, they'll get the full run of the the conference schedule, uh, but it goes from nine to three p.m. And the okay. great thing is, we we just had a, a planning call with uh, all of our speakers, and uh, you know several of our speakers decided to raffle away some free coaching and one-on-one uh, -on -one services. So you'll be automatically entered into that, and it, you know. These are these are folks who are experts in their respective health and wellness areas. So, I highly recommend uh, you know you make it out and you don't know who who the universe is going to connect you with uh, that day. <laughs> Sounds good. 
And what's your uh, what's the cost on your conference for somebody to get a ticket? Yeah, so we have a little bit of a, a sliding scale uh, because there's there's definitely students who are interested, and there's uh, you know professionals and business owners, some who work in nonprofit work, some who work in corporate work. So it ranges from forty seven to ninety seven. Oh, that's super cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's very uh, accessible. I've uh, attended a whole lot more expensive conferences, so it sounds like a yeah. good deal. Um, and then a couple other questions for you that I've got on the notes here that we had we had already chatted about via email. But first off, what is your personal definition of success? For me, it's being able to experience the greatest levels of love, joy, and excitement in my lifetime. Cool, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I think a lot of times we uh, we tend to focus extensively on accomplishing various different goals. You know, I need to get to law school. Once you're there, I need to finish law school. Once you're there, I need to, you know, get my license. Okay, once I'm there, I need to get this job. Once I'm there, I need to get the next job. Once I get that job, I need to get the next job. Then I, can, I need to start the business. And then I need to start the business. But all along the way, are you experiencing those three emotions that are so elusive? Joy, love, and excitement, right? And I learned that there, just like there's limiting beliefs, there's also limiting emotions. And if we don't take yeah. time to work through those, whether it's you know fear, anger, hate, frustration, irritability, impatience, if we don't take time to process them, they become blocks, they become limiting emotions yeah. that stymie our ability to really thrive and make the impact that we want to make. So every day, my morning, I start out with a gratitude meditation. And it really helps me be able to go throughout my day in a way that is empowering, in a way that allows me to connect with myself in an authentic, compassionate way, which in turn allows me to do that with others too. Okay. That's one thing that a lot of folks, when I'm, when I'm talking to very successful people, every successful person that I talk to is grateful they're they're looking out for the good in life and they're they're intentionally mm -hmm. seeking good and seeking positive and when something bad happens they brush it off and move on to the next good thing keep seeking mm -hmm. keep seeking goodness and um the a lot of times folks that are yeah you can have somebody that won the lottery that's it's always the why me depressed sad you know something wrong you know they win the lottery and it's oh the government's going to take half of it you know, that kind of, <laughs> just one, just one, just one. <laughs> um, <It's just> one. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, that that's that intentional seeking, seeking positive, seeking goodness, and and being grateful for what you've what you've been given is a huge, huge benefit. So, all right, I mean, you a huge thing that successful people focus on, like that. Yeah. Uh, what steps do you take daily to improve? You talked about the meditation. What else do you do to? daily to improve your whether it's physical mm -hmm. financial spiritual whatever well-being yeah so for me i focus on i have a morning routine and i have an evening routine that really helps me uh tap into various different facets of my well-being so in the morning i really i really practice that's where i focus on practicing my meditative uh aspects of my routines so I'm not the kind of person that I will fall back asleep once I wake up, Curtis. Uh -huh. I, I'm up and I'm up, okay? So I don't fall back asleep. So I use that to my advantage because I end up, uh, you know, just as soon as I wake up, I lay in bed. And part of the reason why I decided to do this too was because uh, about 85% of us will check our phone within the first 15 minutes of waking up. And I didn't want to do that. And so the first probably 30 minutes after I wake up, say I wake up at 6.30, 6.30 to 7 or 6.30 to 7.15, I don't check my phone. I start out my gratitude meditation. And what I do is when I first started it, okay, mind you, as an attorney, when I started this like four or five years ago, I was very skeptical, okay? I'll, I'll level with you. I was like, is this really going to work? Yeah. And so I would think of like three things that I was grateful for. But as time went along, I developed... I developed it into a more robust practice where I ask, what am I grateful for that happened in my life yesterday? What am I grateful for that's going to happen in my life today? So this morning, I was grateful for you. And what's going to, you know, what am I grateful for that if I get it another day of life, I'm, I'm 
you know, grateful for that's going to happen in my life tomorrow. So I think of like 10 to 15 things for each category every single morning. And you can imagine when you do that, it really just settles you and centers you and grounds you, right? And brings you to what's important. And then I spend time doing some additional meditation, you know, that, um, you know, just varies in form. And then in the evening, it's where I I really focus on uh, reading and where I focus on uh, journaling. Okay. So I, I journal I journal every day. And one of the biggest challenges that I see with folks not engaging in some form of writing is I I don't have time to write pages or a page in my journal. Well, then that's okay. Start out with a sentence, even if you don't finish the sentence. Just start somewhere start capturing some of what's going on in your inner and external life. Because when we do that, we're able to really see our growth, right? I'm on my fourth journal now. And it's, it's really awesome. It's like a book. You're able to go back to your first one and see where you're at and learn even from yourself as to where you were back then, you know? Yeah. And you can be an incredibly powerful source of knowledge if you know how to harness it and you're able to tap into that growth. So that's a little bit about what I do in terms of my routines. Uh, talking about harnessing knowledge or, you know, just remembering positive things that you learned. I, I just published my fourth book uh, uh, and that actually, I saw that. Congratulations. Curtis. Yeah, thank you. But that, that was actually done as, as a journal. So I, I did the first three, it, all of them have been just journaling and writing notes, you know, as I was reading, mm-hmm you know, after suffering brain cancer, surviving brain cancer, I had a, uh, my memory is still absolutely terrible. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I can't, I, I now got to where I can find the Walmart, you know, driving from my house to Walmart and back, um, you know, the local grocery store or whatever, but it's like three miles away. And so absolutely terrible sense of direction. My memory is not great, but I started every time I was reading these different books, like that's how to win friends and influence people. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. And before I had read through that over and over again, taking, uh, you know, highlighting and taking different bookmark just felt taking notes and stuff, but yeah. starting to journal and write down thoughts. And when I thought of something that I didn't see in one of the books, being able to write those down was a huge, huge benefit there. And, mm-hmm. uh, so that's actually, you know, I, I was just doing that because my memory was bad, but that actually has turned into a couple of best selling books and uh, yeah. kind of a neat. Need deal so having it written down is a huge thing. And whether it's whether it's just having journals written down that your kids can find, you know, fifty years from now, and oh man, this is this is what Dad was about, or whatever. It's kind of a cool thing to have. have it's part of your. Recorded. It's part of your legacy. You know? Yeah, absolutely. It is. So something weird just happened with my uh, with my lighting here. I don't know if I look. Looks you like look, I look great. Real, look real red. <laughs> <laughs> um. And then, so here's another question I got for you. What what advice do you have for, for someone that's making an important decision? Do you have a process for that? or? I do, actually. That's a really great question. Um, you know, if it's a, it's a really important decision, either a professional or personal, it, I, I, a very practical tool that I use are, okay, what are the options that you have? You know, typically you, you can boil it down to two main things, right? Two main decisions, two main options. But sometimes you might have three. If it's three, the process is going to take a little bit longer, but uh, it, it will still help. And then just go down for the each of the options, the pros and the cons. Okay. Okay. And like Roosevelt did, right? With the yeah, a little bit of just pros and cons. Pros and cons. I mean that that strategy still applies, you know. And I think for me, when I really need to, you know, make a decision that's important, I will I will do that. And then I will talk it out with somebody that I trust, you know, whether it's it's a, a loved one or or my own coach, right? Somebody that I trust, somebody that in my experience uh, is able to provide centered, focused, grounded, um, wise counsel, yeah, wise counsel, exactly, right? And so, and once I do that, the last step is knowing, believing that there are no wrong choices, that whatever path I choose, it's going to be okay. Right. And a lot of times we think that, Oh, if I make this decision, 
uh, something wrong might happen, right? And I don't know if you if you were aware of this, but a decision making has a lot of emotions associated with it. And it requires a high level of emotional intelligence because with decision-making, you have emotions of regret. Good decision-making requires a high level of emotional intelligence. Decision-making. Yeah, yeah that's true. Decision that's very true. That's very true. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, you know, because there are some uh, folks who have a tougher time making decisions than others, but there could be emotions of like regret or guilt or fear or happiness or, you know, just joy, elation. Yeah. If you feel that you made the right decision versus if you feel that you didn't. And so just managing all of that also requires a high level of emotional awareness and processing. Okay. That's uh, that's good. Good insight there. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell me about a specific moment that set you on the path now with fitness? I know you maybe you can go through some of the stuff on how you got into, you know, what made you want to become a lawyer. And are, are you still pursuing the, the legal business as well? Or is it, have you I do to fitness or, okay. Yeah, no, I do. I, I ended up getting my my uh, high performance coaching certification. Uh, so I did, uh, you know, officially three years ago, become a coach. Um, but I still have my my license to practice law. I don't practice law in the courtroom, uh, you know, especially right now. But I do um, I do work as what's called a, a workplace investigator. So if there's 10 situations that happen at work, you know, anything from uh, bullying, uh, harassment, um, discrimination, and any of those issues, I go in and I help the, the company, the business, the entity determine what happened. So cool. it's not, it's no longer a situation where it's uh, advocacy work, yeah. but it is, it is still a really important piece of ensuring that there is a safe and healthy, positive culture in whatever entity it is that we're working. So I do retain that. Okay. Um, but your question uh, was, Just remind me, me again. Tell me about a specific moment that set you on the path oh, yeah. you're on right now. Yeah. So, you know, for me, uh, back in 2015, 2016, uh, I had a couple of family, a couple of family members who passed away from heart disease. And I think that was a time for me in 2016 where I really just turned the mirror on myself and really asked, am I doing everything that I can to really take care of my own health? And that's when I realized, you know, all these different areas of my own health and wellness that I was disregarding, right? And one of the most prominent areas that I realized was a blind spot for me was my emotional wellness. And that's why I decided to go all in on that and nurture that component of myself. But I think honestly, that was one of the, the biggest uh, uh, impetus for me to do it. And, you know, going back even further, you know, back when I was uh, 12, um, I was actually uh, hit by a car and oh, it, it broke my femur in half. And um, it was really, as a young kid, you know, as a teenager, it was tough to go through that because I was in the hospital for almost a month, uh, right, around, right around 29 days, yeah, pretty much a month. Uh, and then I spent seven weeks in a cast from like, you know, the middle part of my chest all the way down to my ankle, like just the whole summer, just laying flat. Yeah. So having to learn how to walk again was really intense, really painful. And... Um, I think as I reflected, you know, in more recent years on what I was doing, I also thought about that. And I, I, I saw that when you are in, when you are injured, when you are going through an illness, when you're hurt, you know, um, it can be diff difficult to really, really make um, the impact that you want to make, you know, and I know that through your journey, you can, you can connect with that. And so I think that for me, I just decided to really commit myself to myself for the first time, really, you okay. know, in a way that I hadn't before. And it, it was honestly the best, uh, putting my health and wellness first was the best investment and decision that I could have made. Cool. Okay. That's, uh, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, if, if you could recommend one book for our audience, what would that be? Or you can recommend more than one if you'd like, but. Yeah. Um, 
I know you'd mentioned the power of now, but there's yeah, the power of now by Eckhart Tolle. I think it's a it's a really powerful book in the spiritual sense, in the um, in in the sense of being able to manage you know stress, anxiety as well. It does it does delve into those topics. Um, I think if you want a practical book, uh, The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod is also a really good book. I haven't heard of that one. I'll have to check it out. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Uh, it really does focus on you developing your your morning routine, right? Okay. Um, and you know another book if you want to delve in deep more deeply into your soul, uh, The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer is also a really good book. Okay. Highly recommend those. Cool. Uh, yeah, those are all good recommendations. Appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. A uh, couple more questions for you. What what character traits do you value most in others or in yourself as well? It's always a tough one. Everybody wants to have the same, you know, the same type of answers that honesty and integrity. Whatever, but um, I think I think honestly, for me, the the main ones are someone who is. Um, accepting of themselves someone who is empathetic towards others understands that everybody's going through something yeah um and somebody who has learned to instead of holding their heart like a closed fist has learned to open it and is able to experience share receive and give love cool and I love that. That's some, uh, that's some great answers. I can tell you're, you're quick on your feet until you've done some, uh, you've had a chance to do some speaking and uh, <laughs> just yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it's a great conversation, man. I appreciate you being on today and just thanks so much for, uh, thanks so much for joining us. And it was just great. It is the best way to get a hold of you the health and wellness universe, health and wellness dot university forward slash HWU. That's the best way. And people can just reach out to, uh, I have both an email and a telephone number there. If anybody wants to just, you know, message me, give me a call or send an email and my team will, will respond and we'll get back to you with uh, whatever questions you have, whatever needs. If you're interested in working uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, let me know and we'll take you to the next level. Perfect, man. That was, that was a uh, good conversation. I appreciate you chatting with me. Thanks for having me on Curtis. I really appreciate you connecting with you. Definitely. Thanks so much.